I am your host and comrade, Rob. This is our, as Trisha just said, mutual aid organization workshop. Um, the goal is to put out some information about mutual aid organization and how we can all get involved. Indeed. Hi, I'm Trisha, your hostess with the mostest rant. Though I don't know how much ranting I'll be going on with this because this is mostly positive. Pretty much all positive. Hey, Don. Yeah. Yes, hey, hello, everybody. It's your boy, Don. Good news, Hughes. Back at it again. So our Patreon is live. Um, I always make it a point to point that out because so far what we're doing has been on little to no money at all. Uh, we have three, five, and ten dollar donations, and then we also have a hundred thousand dollar a month tier for specifically for Elon Musk. Um, no, anyway, all jokes aside, any amount at all helps. Um, with your support, we can help grow this project into a, well, an independent leftist media source. The address for that is www.patreon.com slash for we are many. We're also all over social media. Uh, we have a website that's www.forwearemany.org. Um, we are doing, you can find all of our streams there. Um, you can find articles that we write there. We're also on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and we have a Facebook page and two groups. Um, so on to mutual aid. Uh, the goal is solidarity and not charity. Um, Mutual aid, mutual aid may sound similar to charity, but it couldn't be more different. We don't have somebody at the top scraping funds into their own pockets to the tune of millions of dollars a year. It's people directly giving help to people. It's a form of direct action that focuses on um, providing help in, in the form of goods, services, or skills workshops. The pandemic, any pandemic, but... Obviously, right now we're going through COVID, um, and that has shown us that mutual aid is not only a good thing, it's necessary for the survival of millions of Americans. Weather emergencies such as Hurricane uh, Sandy or Winter Storm Uri have shown us that the people can respond more quickly and more effectively than federal organizations like FEMA. And ultimately, it's on us to have these systems and organizations already in place before things like this happen. And that's exactly why we're doing this workshop today. There's a, uh, do you want to take over, Trisha? Sure. Uh, there's plenty of historical precedents for what we're seeing. In fact, it goes straight down to the evolutionary level. For social apes, without cooperation, we'd have never made it out of Africa. Occupy Sandy on the eastern seaboard in 2012 mobilized literally in a few hours. It was organized by Occupy protesters. They were canoeing down flooded streets, taking people hot meals, blankets, water, and other necessary supplies. Even in an activist or revolutionary sense, mutual aid has been a focus of leftist movements since the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense mobilized their first efforts in the 60s with things like, you know, the, the free breakfast for kids program. That kick-started our entire meals program in our schools that we have today. Sorry, excuse my dogs wrestling in the background. I don't know if you can hear them. They're excited to be outside playing. <laughs> um, and here's a list of what the BPP called survival programs, just to give us a clue of what we can be accomplished through mutual aid. We've got the George Jackson Medical Clinic, the Sickle Cell Anemia Research Foundation, People's Free Dental Program, People's Free Optometry Program, People's Free Ambulance Program, the Free Food Program, Free Breakfast Program, the Food Cooperative Program, and Intercommunal News Service. And we're going to have this in the show notes so that you can see all these details here about contacting them and what all they can assist you with. The Black Panther Party survival programs include all of those basically that we just listed <laughs> as well as uh, the People's Cooperative Housing Program, Free Busing to Prisons Program, uh, People's Free Legal Aid and Educational Program, 
these are things that have helped sustain each other for a long time. And we need to see more of this grow. Amen. Brad, would you like Amen to take to it? Did you say me or Don? I'm sorry. Is Don... I can't see <laughs> what Don's doing. Don, do you want to take it? Um, as long as the slide stays up because my phone screen's <laughs> cracked and um, yeah, very hard to read. Pull it gotcha. up on your computer. Shit. I literally can't when you're screen sharing. Oh, I'm not. No. Am I? Mm hmm. Oh. Yes, I, the Occupy Sandy slide. <laughs> my bad. I thought I stopped that. It's all good. <laughs> Anyway, as we saw with the uh, Black Panther Party survival programs, they focused heavily on meeting people where they were and directly showing that a better world is possible. I think that energy was largely there for Occupy Sandy as well, a snowstorm slash hurricane. That still blows my mind, by the way, but a snowstorm slash hurricane hit the eastern seaboard extremely hard. People were, were without power, without heat, without food, without running water. The Occupy protesters saw a vacuum and they saw an immediate need, so they stepped up and they fucking did something about it. All right. Setting the example, leading that, being the change you wish to see in the world. Right. Uh, as Grace Lee Boggs put it, we are the people, we are the leaders that we've been waiting for. Um, so. Absolutely. Mass emails were already being sent between Occupy organizers while the storm was still making landfall, requesting disaster response and resource distribution. Um, two distribution sites were set up in Brooklyn churches to collect clothes, blankets, and food. The Church of St. Luke and St. Matthew and the Church St. Jacoby Evangelical Lutheran Church. That was kind of redundant. Sorry about that. Uh, members of Occupy were readily transported to areas in need by the rideshare program called the Occupy Motor Pool. Um, these, these members included construction teams, medical committees, and even a weatherman, which if you think about it, is kind of important. They need to know the storm's over before they can start canoeing down flooded streets. Um, Occupy's disaster relief efforts spread across several areas, including more hard-hit areas such as Coney Island, Staten Island, Rockaways in Queens, Sheepshead, uh, Sheepshead Bay in Brooklyn, Jersey Shore. Um, they exclusively operated via their own hubs, but also actively supported and cultivated the creation of neighbor-run locations, uh, such as the Midland Avenue Neighborhood Relief and Cedar, Gro Cedar Grove Community Hub were both run by New York residents and both provided 24-hour support through the first winter after Hurricane Sandy. The largest Occupy Sandy loca uh, location called 520 Clinton, located in Clinton Hills Church of St. Luke and St. Matthew, demonstrated many of Occupy's mutual aid values and projects side-by-side -side what were once on display at Zuccotti Park. But, uh, 520 Clinton was set ablaze on Christmas Eve in 2012. That was less than a month after Hurricane Sandy. They were still doing pretty extensive relief work at that point. Um, causing extensive fire and smoke damage. It forced the closure of the location, moving operations directly to the affected areas, which decentralized the efforts at the time, which ultimately was the goal anyway, was to be as decentralized as possible. And... Um, now I am going to screen share again. <laughs> we have a video to watch. We all remember the Occupy Wall Street movement. We covered them here a lot. Just about everybody formed their own opinion about the protesters and their cause. Whatever you think of their agenda and them, they've reformed now into Occupy Sandy. They're redirecting their energy into helping hurricane victims from the Jersey Shore to Long Island Sound. NBC's Katie Turr has our Making a Difference report. There are no official badges. All they have for identification is a first name scribbled on some masking tape. These volunteers may not have legal charity status, but that's not stopping them. They desperately need our help. They lost everything. And the war attack the rich! Remember the Occupy Wall Street movement, famous for taking over New York's Zuccotti Park and coining the term 1%? Well, now they have Occupy Sandy. Within days after Sandy hit, Occupy went to work. And while FEMA temporarily shut its doors during last week's Nor'easter, 
due to bad weather. Occupy never did. More than two weeks after the storm, thousands of people volunteered daily. Sasha Brown is just one of them. He helps pack up supplies and deliver them to people in need. Uh, I'm just another New Yorker helping out other New Yorkers. His band finished touring, so he borrowed the van and showed up here. Who's paying for the gas? Uh, I am. Or the band is. They don't know it yet, but they're donating. <laughs> Although the Occupy movement says they have no leadership, they have set up a hyper-organized system for this. Three main hubs in New York, each with a command center, a medic dispatch, and a car dispatch to organize drivers. There's a phone bank, kitchens that provide two hot meals a day, and no shortage of helpers. They use Twitter and Facebook to match donations to needs, and UPS to deliver supplies that have been carefully picked out. Wonderful, thank you. With $400,000 in the bank and next to no overhead, nearly all the money can go straight to relief efforts. For all of small, every little bit helps. They're trying to help people to survive. No bureaucracy, and the Occupy volunteers say that means no problem. Katie Turr, NBC News, New York. So, yeah. Um, it's beautiful. Exactly, exactly. Like they said, there's there's no bureaucracy. It's just directly people helping people. Um, right. it, it's, no forms to fill out of how much money do you make and prove to us that you need some help. No, if you need it and it's on hand, here, there you go. It's yours now. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. As it should be. Uh, Don, do you want to take us into dual power? Looks like we have a comment about it, actually. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I know I'm supposed to, but I don't know anything about it. So I want one of you guys to do it. <laughs> that way I'm not screwing it. Sorry. Right Been well, unprepared. Most, <laughs> it's all good. Uh, most people see the issues with capitalism. Many already want to change the system or how we live our lives. Working towards a new alternative structure to the decaying capitalist hellscape. Um, Hyper individualism is a flawed concept. We are all one. A harm to one is a harm to all. And it's up to us to actually help each other through those things. Um, unity and solidarity are nature. That is nature's way. Again, we would not have survived if it wasn't for mutual aid. It is literally a factor of evolution. In the long run, the practice of solidarity proves much more advantageous to the species than the development of individuals endowed with predatory inclinations. That is a quote from Crotchet. Yeah, okay. so I just wanted to, uh, to, to throw that book out again. Mutual Aid, A Factor of Evolution uh, by Peter Krop uh, <laughs> Kropotkin. Sorry. Um, he's a well thought of anarchist writer. He's, uh, I think he's got a little bit of the Marxist, um, critique of capital, you know? So, I mean, like, I think that he probably started as a Marxist and became an anarchist judging by the evolution of his work, but, um, that's a very great place to start in on reading theory. Uh, if you don't want to dive into Marxism because it's too it's too much, it's too overwhelming, start there. It's still going to be overwhelming, but not nearly as much. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> well, the point is that we have the tools and the resources for everyone to flourish. Everyone. If we just start valuing people over profit. You know, that's the biggest problem with capitalism is it values profit over people. Money is a man-made concept. We actually exist. Right. Uh, we can't count on wealthy business owners to think of or fucking care about the good of the community. They don't. They care about the good of the fatness of their wallet. That's it. Period. But what no, can we, we do? <laughs> we can do direct action. Stop doing things, you know, according to what will profiteer someone else and start doing things that actually positively impact the people around us, like uh, directly improving material conditions, strikes, sit-ins, and protests. 
These bring attention to the problem. We can do the mutual aid, helping others in any way that you can. Um, one day you might need help too, and hopefully you can rely on the community around you to help you build. Today you, tomorrow me. Um, building a community that is willing to help each other is incremental to this. If people need help, we give it to them. We can't rely on the government or businesses to help the people. They don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. If their actions haven't shown that enough yet, they don't give a fuck. It's we the people have to help the people. Okay, so now we know what mutual aid is and we know what dual power is. And just to recap there, dual power is the the concept of building an alternative. Um, you know, that doesn't mean necessarily, you know, like trying to start a firefight with the U.S. government. No, no, we're just going to show that we can build our own supply lines and we can take care of each other. Right. We can work outside of their system to do these things and lots of people already are with community gardens that they give the food away for free to people in the neighborhood that need food um you know clothing drives things like that you know that's stepping outside of the system we can work so, around it so we've seen quite a bit about what mutual aid can do, uh, can do and why dual power is important so the questions are how can we be better prepared how can we have these systems in place before an emergency that makes them immediately necessary? Ultimately, we have to organize. It's that simple. I mean, I know it's an intimidating mm -hmm. task, but it's really, it's really not. It doesn't take a whole lot of people to start a small project. Even one person acting alone can and will directly impact the material con uh, conditions of people on the ground. That's, that's crucial. Um, so I want to talk a little bit, I, I, I based a lot of this around Occupy Sandy because, you know, they, it, what they did was very well documented. Um, and very effective. Yes. Uh, but men members of Inter Occupy and Occupy Wall Street Tech Ops coordinated the online presence. Uh, they extensively used social networking sites um, like Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube. I don't think Instagram was as big then, but... Probably that too. They uh, kept the public up to date with their relief efforts and what supplies they, they determined what supplies and assistance were needed at what locations. They created a wedding registry on amazon.com for needed supplies that allowed people from all over the world to donate goods. And as of January 25th, uh, 2013, that's, that's two months in a week, two months in a week, I think. They raised almost $720,000 um, on Amazon towards fulfillment of the registry. We don't have an exact number, though, because Amazon has not been cooperative with Occupy Sandy to give the group specific numbers. Um, that said, another registry was created through a local business, um, and that put 100% of funds raised for the needed supplies directly in the hands of locally owned businesses. Um, Items purchased through the Occupy Sandy local business registry were delivered directly from local stores to affected neighbors through the Staten Island Tool Lending Library. Um, from the start, Occupy Sandy worked in mutual aid principles such as volunteer skill shares, in which participating neighbors encouraged the creation of small projects, co-ops, and neighbor-led efforts. Um, Occupy Sandy placed a large emphasis on individuals becoming empowered encouraging a culture of innovation and social business incubation in these hard hit areas. Long-term recovery organizations were facilitated by Occupy volunteers using the New York General Assembly style meeting tools, including the Occupy hand signals in the following locations, Brooklyn, Lower East Side, Rockaways, and Staten Island. So those of you that don't know, the Occupy hand signals are pretty self-explanatory. It's yay, nay, in the middle, um, um, block, <laughs> block. Uh, point of reference. Um, you know, they're, they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, but long-term organizations work through the o Occupy Sandy Project Council to provide large grants via participatory budgeting framework to affected communities and foster grassroots projects such as Respond and Rebuild, Staten Island Tool Library, the People's Recovery Summit, Feeding Families Community Garden, 
Midland Avenue Neighborhood Relief, the May Edwards Chin Memorial Food Pantry and Clinic, Heart and Soul, and a citywide network of home cooks to supply the support hubs. Um, so by now, you're probably asking, how do I even get started? Well, we have some resources for you. Um, we're going to be posting these links in the, the description of the podcast uploads, in the comments of the Facebook stream, and in our show notes on our website. Um, AOC was involved with the mutual aid organizing push. We actually talked to uh, Brandon from Occupation Denton about that. Um, they got some of the money out of that fundraiser. I may have some issues with some of her actions in the house, you know, like not standing up for her beliefs enough, pretty much. But she really puts her money where her mouth is when it comes to community organization. And I have to respect the fuck out of that. Right. Yeah, when you sure. see her actually strapping her boots on and getting out there and help distribute food and necessities, it's like, okay, she yeah. put her money where her mouth is. <laughs> Right. I mean, like, she flew to Texas to help distribute supplies. Ted Cruz flew to Cancun with his family. I'm just saying. Right. right. Prime example. Good congressperson, bad congressperson. It's crazy how out of 600 people in Congress, though, she's like, you know, one of two or three that does things like this. But, uh, right. collective care or mutual aid, or whatever you want to call it, is our best weapon against COVID-19 and other disasters, whether it's a natural disaster, whether it's the impending threat of climate change, um, and obviously the pandemic itself. We have seen some pretty terrific, I don't know why I said terrific, I completely meant the opposite of that, some pretty terrible um, unemployment numbers over the last year. Um, and whenever, whenever these eviction protections stop, there's going to be millions of people newly homeless. Um, so it's imperative that we get these, um, that we get these projects rolling. Uh, so they're, they're, I'm going to post an article, as I said, um, it's an amazing list of resources and, and, and information, sorry, about mutual aid organizations already mobilized on the ground. If you currently need help, or if you want to jump into an already existing organization, this is a good place to start. Um, it'd be a good idea if you're new to organizing or new to mutual aid. It gives more time and ability to volunteer. Um, and I mean, you know, more heads are better than one in terms of coming up with ideas. Even if you're starting your own mutual aid group, I recommend using this resource for the informative value. Does uh, anybody got anything to throw out? Um, what are some steps for getting started for a mutual aid organization, Rob? Well, I um, I got this from uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna plug their 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 channel at the end of this, but uh. I think it was re-education that I got this info from. They have some pretty damn good videos that are that are very informative. They go into more depth than we're ultimately going to today. Um, but five steps to get started. Ultimately, the first step is find out what you're passionate about. Um, think about what is going to motivate you. What first motivated you? I mean, was it climate? Was it experience with poverty? I mean, homelessness, food insecurity, water issues, whatever you're interested in, there are ways to help. Uh, think about what your personal skills are. Think about what affects you personally. Think about what you know a lot about. And remember that, you know, art, whether that be, you know, physical art like drawing or painting, um, video and music are also important. And for that matter, we still need volunteers ourselves. So if you're interested, uh, go to forwearemany.org, contact us there, or um, go to our Facebook page and message that. We're pretty prompt at, respond, uh, at responding when we get messages. Um, the second step is to pinpoint your local prob problems. They look different everywhere we're at. Um, here, one of the big things I would say is uh, green spaces. That doesn't get talked about a whole lot. There's no shade. I live in Glendale, Arizona. Um, you know, they can, be, but other local problems can be poverty, 
uh, water insecurity, food insecurity, housing insecurity, incarceration, police brutality. Find something that you fit into. Um, you're probably going to have to adapt if you're working with other people, you know, obviously, but work with the community. Uh, if everybody does a little bit, a lot gets done. And on that note, never take on more than you can actually do. Because if you're too burned out to do anything, then you're not going to get anything done. So be mindful of that. Um, start with small little projects, you know, like an hour a week, if that's all you can do. And then build up to more if you can. Um, step three is learn the basics so you can learn the solution. And I'm not saying to spend hours in the library or hours on Google, but do a little bit of research. A lot of people came before we did. Building off of somebody else is a whole lot easier than building from scratch. So just do a little research. The answers may already be known, may already be out there. And when you're going over these things, the questions to ask yourself are kind of like, how did things play out? Uh, was it a success? Was it a failure? Why? What went, what went wrong? Eh. What went wrong? That's too many W's. <laughs> what went right? And what can be done better? So that's the whole idea is just build off of the people that came before us. There's been people doing these kind of things for decades. They have a whole lot of good ideas and good organization. Um, step four is talk to your community. You can't step or you can't skip this step. You just can't. Uh, without communication, you're never going to convince people that you have their best interests in mind. Don't be weird. Don't make it political. Don't be like, hi, I'm an anarcho-communist and I'm here to help. Don't, don't do that. Be normal-ish. Don't make it political. Don't tell people what to think. Um, Mao made it very clear that we need to meet people where they are. And the Black Panther Party had so much success because they did that. Um, this is all about education and helping one another. Uh, and step five is pretty self-explanatory, but it is work with the community to achieve these goals. Um, for example, I am currently, right now, organizing a park cleanup for the park down the road from my house. And, um, well, pretty much trying to follow these, uh, these tips here and getting it done. But, I mean, it seems like there's a pretty good response, and I hadn't even hung up flyers until today. Um, yeah when is that when is that park cleanup by the way that is monday march 22nd so two weeks from today monday march 22nd for that at 11 a.m at thunderbird paseo park in glendale arizona very nice very nice indeed definitely got to make sure we get some like pictures and stuff i don't like showing off the stuff that we do because it's not about showing off but if we don't get it out there people will never know right and i mean it's not like i'm gonna be out there filming everything we're doing no fuck that that's not why we're there but i am right. damn well gonna take a picture of the pile of trash bags and post that like hey you can make a difference too absolutely um, so now I want to do an open Q and a, if anybody has, um, you know, any questions ultimately, um, first of all, do either of you have any questions? Uh, not really. I, I pretty much understand mutual aid and the steps you laid out to get it going. Indeed. Johnny in the comment asked, is revolution possible or are we always going to be working around the edges? And to that, I just kind of want to say, look around you, man. The capitalist infrastructure is crumbling and nobody is doing anything to fix it. We are in a decline just like Rome was for the last hundred years of their existence. And uh, we're completely occupied with arguing about a fucking potato and some fucking books that some guys trust decided to take off the shelves a year ago yeah yeah for sure right so in and terms keeping, of is revolution it, possible well ahead, i think I'm that sorry. feeding people and clothing people and things like that are revolutionary ideas okay exactly. when fred hampton was telling the black panther party to come together for these free breakfasts and things like that what was he leading that with I am a revolutionary. Why? Because what the 
what they were putting into place there of stepping outside of the capitalist system and making sure that people had the things that they need regardless, that is revolutionary. So that I actually I actually want to play that video. Um, not at oh, this yes, exact moment. But before we're done with this, I will. We're we're gonna end on that. But watching that speech oh, that yeah. you know, him getting the crowd behind him, they get more enthusiastic every time. You know, like it gives me goosebumps mm-hmm. every time. Um so Johnny also, uh, oh, well, I want to finish answering the first question. Is revolution possible? I think that we need to get the idea, our, our romanticized ideas of revolution out of our heads. A revolution is not always an armed insurrection. In fact, those revolutions tend to not necessarily go in the direction that you want them to go. That being said, neoliberalism is a fucking huge problem. Um, the capitalist system as a whole is a huge problem. It's been globalized. Everything is based on profit. And it's all at the expense of the global south. So liberating those workers can be as simple as getting those workers, as we're seeing in India or Myanmar, to strike. I mean, I think that we are seeing, right. whether whether or not we're paying attention, I think that we are seeing a global revolution right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. We've got Yellow Vest that kicked off in Europe and is now here in the States, too. Plus, the examples you just said, you know, in India and Myanmar, like people all over the world are being exploited to the point that there is no tolerance left for it. And you see changes happen when you come together. It's a matter of uniting behind that one single ideal of actual equality straight up what's up rob oh not much hi emily (laughs) (laughs) um so yeah i think uh i think that the future holds a lot of good things for us as capitalism decays, I don't think that we can just, you know, like rise up and crush it, but we can make a spider web of networks underneath it that are in place before it collapses. Um, we can directly show that a better world is possible rather than, you know, just talking about it forever. Right. You know, that's the thing. It's going to crumble regardless. We are watching the death of capitalism in real time (laughs) you know um what you do with those pieces as they crumble away is up to you you can either make use of the things that are around us because of what capitalism produced and make sure that everyone around you has a sufficient amount of what they need and hopefully not just to survive but to thrive All right, so uh, that video, aren't you? Yeah, I don't think we have. Do we have any more questions? No, nope, I'm just seeing the ones well, we do. Funny. We 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 have some from uh, from Emily. She's in the support group one instead of in the event. Ah, um, but she thanked us for doing this. You're welcome. Absolutely. Um, and she was the one that asked about dual power too. But uh, she asked if we are actively involved in mutual aid ourselves, and if so, how can we help, or how can I help? Uh, we do have our Facebook group, the For We Are Many Mutual Aid Organizing Group, um, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. Uh, everywhere that we have viewers or supporters or staff members, we want to encourage everybody to get involved. Um, we're kind of just starting to roll this out, but ultimately message us, tell us where you're at and we'll try to put you in touch with somebody on the ground. If we have somebody or put you in touch with other organizations, if we don't, um, how can people ask questions who could not make it to the live stream? It is hard to fit into everyone's schedules for sure. And others might still have questions. That's very true. Um, you know, like mention us in Twitter or on Twitter (laughs) in a tweet. Um, 
you know, like post on our Facebook wall, post in the support group. We pay attention to these things every day. Right. And if it's a question specifically pertaining to something brought up in one of the live streams, those comments are open where you can come on there and ask those questions at a later time and we will answer. Yeah, absolutely. So um, those are posted in all of the groups as well as the event page, too. So. <laughs> Indeed. Yes, they are. So um, I'm going to play this video and then I'm just going to cut the stream. Indeed. Sounds good. Indeed. So uh, I almost forgot to screen share it. That would have been super effective. Oh, my reference. Nice. Hey, we always make the Black Panther Party. That they can do anything they want to do. We might not be back. I might be in jail. I might be anywhere. But when I leave, you can remember I said with the last words on my lips that I am a revolutionary. And you're going to have to keep on saying that. You're going to have to say that I am a proletarian. I am the people. I'm not the pig. You've got to make a distinction. And the people are going to have to attack the pig. The people are going to have to stand up against the pig. That's what the pastors are doing. That's what the pastors are doing all over the world. Fred.